I'm a storyteller, and I've come to believe that how we tell the story of our work, the narratives and the metaphors that we use shape its outcome, shape its influence, shape its power. So here is a story. Canada is one of the largest nonprofit sectors in the world. It's diverse with activities in every arena of Canadian life. It has economic impact compared to our extraction industries. Almost every one of us have been engaged in volunteering, supporting, developing, creating new, generating activity towards public benefit. And yet we see its parts much more than we see its whole. Change is at this sector's heart. Not only does it invent social solution, but itself it is constantly changing. It's no longer either completely voluntary nor nonprofit, and hybrid, hybridity in structure abounds. So what is it really? I built this slide when I was working for the federal government. Uh, despite the fact over a lifetime of work, I could not explain what the sector was. I was working on its funding practices at, at the time. And what I found inside government was really a divided story. Those who understood the sector as mom and pop operations, badly run businesses is what they meant, and those who saw its hand in social transformation. The story goes like this. In the early 2000s, okay, it's not going to translate real well. You should be seeing dots on the map. In the early 2000s, People uh, began to, men began to die in our communities. And even though we knew nothing of HIV, AIDS, we formed community groups to support them, and then we joined them up. Imagine multicolored dots appearing on the screen. <laughs> We've done the same with young people in schools. We've done it with homework clubs, with learning disability associations, with jump math, with senior supports so that seniors can stay at home. Meals on wheels, friendly driving, snow shoveling, and so it goes, recycling climate change and a, in a rich and constantly shifting tapestry of, share, of care and concern. Faster than lightning and faster than public policy. Now, again, imagine those little dots. When I first built this slide in 2006, I would turn to an audience and I would say, and what do you see? And invariably, people would say a mess. But something curious is happening. Now less than a decade later when I do my flourish, I hear always either a spider web or a network. Civil society in this country is networking rapidly, joining up, sharing capacity, resources, creating a generative uh, web of ideas and program to address social problems, and we are increasingly aware of the process. So let's drill down here. Two frames on how we organize, not good nor bad. I learned this from Liz to hold both. The first, just very different. A hierarchy is a Newtonian model, like a well-oiled machine, excellent at control, stability, and production. A network, on the other hand, is a chaotic, constantly changing structure, a mess, very good at creation and the dissemination of new. This is actually Greenpeace's network. So here come the starlings. I'm a commuter and a reader. And at 6 a.m. I'm on a bus. And darn, it was a stats magazine I pulled off the coffee table, not what I intended. But I read anyway, I'll read the back of the Kleenex box, and in that, in that stats magazine I read an analysis of how starlings flock as a complex adaptive system. Each bird follows very simple rules that collectively enable them to twist and turn and take advantage of the slightest shift in sunlight and air current. Flocks, or murmurations as they're called, are good for starlings. That's why they do it. Biochemist Stuart Kaufman talks about order for free in his exploration of the evolution of living systems. Complexity triggers self-organization. When a high level of diversity is reached, the combinations multiply rapidly and novelty abounds. A generative system emerges and it serves survival. We, are, we can think about the nonprofit sector as a complex adaptive system, a collection of individuals, in this case not molecules or birds but organizations, with the freedom to act in unpredictable ways, but whose interconnections Interconnected actions produce a constantly shifting pattern of change that serves collective benefit. Oh gosh, 
I'll go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Heather. <laughs> Almost at the end. In the early days of community development, we as theory, we used to say an organization was more than the sum of its people. Now Yanir Barat Yam of the New England Complex Systems Institute seems sees human civilization itself as an organism, capable of more complexity than the individuals or organizations within. And he proposes an evolution over the last, set, last decade as we shift towards networked organizing. <clears throat> In this way, we're becoming more like starlings. As a funder at Trillium, I watched this as sector networked. Its numbers, diversity, and complexity increasing, and it was generating novel recombinations. Arts organizations addressing homelessness, soccer clubs with coaches tuned to inclusion and self-esteem, even ethnic conflict resolution. And now as we explore the hybrid space between sector and business, the intersection of two complex adaptive systems, public benefit activity has for the moment uncoupled from public policy, and social experimentation is everywhere. Understanding the story of the sector as a spontaneous system that generates social change for public benefit changes everything. Neither lobbyists nor rabble-rousers, not just recipi recipients or contractees, but a network system of care that spontaneously innovates, seeks solution, and generates public well-being. It's a powerful story. <laughs>